Welcome to Comfort Africa number two. I'm your host, Echo Fan Wolf. I'm gonna um put on these ugly ass glasses and I'm gonna um take y'all to my one of my favorite scenes in this book called Sundown that I'm working on. I need to put on my ugly ass glasses now. <laughs> I'm in chapter three. I'm still debating on if I should do five chapters or seven chapters. I like odd numbers. Please forgive me. And at the end of the chapter, I'm going to put the um, Bravo cast list into the um, story. So at the end, you can go back and read about all the people that you um, were invested in during this whole thing. I want to get to the part where that Shana, Shani, Sean, whatever the fuck her name is. She thinks she's a U.S. Marshal who tapes um, a dude's mouth shut. Okay, let's see. Nope, that's not it. Somebody is swearing while I'm recording. Of course, somebody has to fuck it up. But we're not going to edit that. We're just going to keep on going. Okay, let's go back up. So I can give you guys the page. So the, the last page that I'm on is 233. The end of chapter 3 will be on 255. So now I have to go back up to find it. So I just want to give you all this this little tidbit and um call it a day. Okay, hold on. Did I finish it? Now this is them about to leave. Um they just got their walking papers. So they have to get out of um they have to get out of um, the um, sundown town as of ordered by the mayor. And now, mind y'all, this is a fictional story. None of this shit ever actually happened. But I'm pretty sure that if the mayor of a town wants you out of their town, whether you are, have a badge or not, you kind of have to leave. Even though um, U.S. Marshals and FBI can pretty much go wherever the fuck they want. But the case is under the jurisdiction of a native woman. So, um, she's a tribal police, so I'm pretty sure they're making, um, some strides in tribal police, but no one really gets to explore where tribal police it actually is outside of the new show that just came out. So, we're doing this out of my imagination. I think I found it. No, I didn't. Okay, I might have found it. Let me see. Okay, so as Sean Marie Tanner and Laurie McDuff, they get into this call with Lance Austin at the time. Wyatt. Okay, I might have fucked up there. Wyatt Hampton walks over to Jamie. Yeah, I fucked up. Because I think Jamie's supposed to be the black woman. Nope, no, I didn't fuck up. Because Jamie's not the black woman. Lori is the black woman. All right, we're on track now. So Jamie, I believe, is the FBI agent. Yeah, because Sean is the U.S. Marshal. Jamie's the FBI. Lori is the FBI. Sean is the U.S. Marshal. All right, so now we're up to speed. All right, so it's Sean Marie Tanner, native FBI. I mean, native and U.S. Marshal. And Lori Susan McDuff, black woman. Also, FBI. Get into the car with Lance Austin. They're about to take their time. Um, Lance Austin. About that time, Wyatt Hampton walks over to Jamie to see why she's not riding off into the sunset with the other Native women and the other two police officers. 
as he remembers that Lori is actually a black woman, he starts to speak to Jamie. So why aren't you leaving with the rest of the police force? Who the hell are you? My name is Wyatt Hampton, and I own this here impound yard. That's all you need to know. So you have a raw head up your ass today. Or is that your normal personality trait? Then Wyatt returns, what did you say? You heard what I said. I have a job to do, and you need to stand clear and get out of my way. That would be Jamie. Wyatt returns, you can't tell me what to do on my own land, young lady. Look, I haven't, I'm just gonna go, okay? Y'all just have to figure it out. Jamie returns, <laughs> look, I have a job to do, and you're running interference here. Wyatt returns, well, I'm not running no damn interference. I'm just asking you some very important questions, young woman. I need to know what you are doing on my property. Scroll down a little bit. Jamie returns. You want a progress report? Then you go talk to Liam Bennett. When, it, when I turn in, or better yet, when I check it out on social media at big sites. Uh, yes, some police have social media. Wyatt returns. Or you can just tell me what the fuck I asked you, witch. Oh, I'm sorry about the swearing, y'all. Jamie returns. Oh, so you still seem to think that you're the one in charge here, correct? Wyatt returns. Oh, I'm in charge. This is my land. I have the deed. My home is across the field all the way from here to the heavy equipment. <sighs> Jamie returns. Well, thank God for that. Wyatt returns. What's that mean? Jamie returns. Well, you look like the type, you like the type of guy who tends to fall down a lot. So I guess there's junk around you, around these parts. And plus, besides, I'm going to say only one more time. I'm in charge. Wyatt returns. I don't think so. Jamie returns. Look, dude, I just want to do my damn job and get out of your hair. I mean, nice hat. Wyatt returns. What did you say about my hair? Clearly you can see I don't have much hair. He's got the reverse fade going on. Jamie returns. Where was I? Okay. Jamie returns. Yeah, I really didn't recover by saying that. How nice that hat was. Anyhow, I need you to back the fuck out my face, please. Oh no! My whole shit just disappeared. Okay, it's back. That was close. Wyatt returns. What's gonna happen if I don't get the fuck out your face, as you so politely put it? Jamie returns. Look, sir, or Wyatt, whatever you want to be called, or whatever you identify as, don't fuck with me. I'm on the field captain. I'm the second director of the FBI. And clearly, you don't know who you're fucking with. As she gets into his face, she's done had all she could take. And she puts her hands to pull up her FBI ranking. As Wyatt lets her know. Jamie looks. Oh, I fucked that up. Jamie. She returns. Look, I'm going to give you one more chance to get out of my damn face and let me do my goddamn job. So please, for the last time, get out of my face. Wyatt returns. No, this is my land and my town. And I'm not going to do, I'm not going to let you do something, bitch. I'm not going to listen. Excuse me. I totally got to refix that. I'm not going to listen. I got let. Thank y'all for letting me um get that. L-I-S-T. I'm not going to listen. That's what that should be. I'm not going to listen to some bitch with a badge and a firearm tell me what to do on my own damn land. Jamie returns. Look, 
My name isn't Bitch. And I'm one more thing. I'm willing to let that slide. But you're pushing your fucking luck. Excuse me. You're pushing your fucking buttons. And I'm one heartbeat away from beating your ass, big man. So she's a smaller woman compared to this jackass. Wyatt returns. You can fight your way out of a wet paper bag with holes in it, little girl. Jamie returns. You think that you can that I can't beat you because I'm a woman? I've been I haven't been a little girl since I was ten. You have a lot of nerve for an old man. Why ever turns? Who you calling an old man? I'm only fifty five years old. And I'm not afraid. I'm not that old. Excuse me. I fucked up again. Jamie returns. Being that I'm 42, I'm going to let that slide. But you need to back the fuck up and let me do my damn job. But now, you want to keep playing with me. I'm going to fuck your shit up. Wyatt returns. You and what are you, little girl? Jamie returns. I try really hard not to do this. But, I'm so damn done playing with you. Woo! Damn. <laughs> that was a close one. Where was I? So damn done playing with you. As she quickly spins him around and handcuffs him quickly, she takes her her foot in the back of his knee and puts him down. And um, then she handcuffs him. And so he's screaming by natural, and asks the naturally stupid question. Let me scroll down again. Which the stupid question is, what the hell are you doing? Jamie returns. My motherfucking job, you son of a bitch. Which you are getting in the way. You can't arrest me on my own land, my own property, young lady. I can do whatever the fuck I want. I'm FBI, and you are obstructing justice investigation. And I don't give a damn whose property I'm on. Wyatt returns. Now look here, squaw. You are on my land. And that's the bottom line. First off, my damn name is not Squaw. My damn name is Jamie Elena Woodsman. It would be not wise for you to um, remember that I'm a Native American woman. Also, oh, excuse me, also, yeah, I might. Also, in closing, you need to understand one thing that is true. Why it returns, what's that? We're on page 229, by the way. We're about to be on 230. All of America is native land. So whether you own this lot or not, this once was land and you are just visiting. This was once native, native land. Excuse me, I fucked up reading that. This was once native land and you were just visitors who we couldn't evict, you bastards. Wyatt returns. So what happens now? Now you sit your ass right here until I finish doing my fucking job. Wyatt returns, you bitch, I'm going to have your job with Mayor Mary Beth Tony Tracer. Here's about how you, your treatment, you are going to lose your citizens in Bennettsville. Ah, uh, you and the mayor are in bed with each other then? Thanks for the information for blackmailing, and I can open up an investigation on you both. Wyatt returns, bitch. You haven't read me my motherfucking rights yet. I don't have to read you your rights. You're not under arrest. Or it says you're you aren't under arrest yet. Okay. I'm fucking up reading y'all. I'm sorry, I'm a little nervous. Uh Wyatt returns. Now why am I in handcuffs? Then if I'm not being arrested, Jamie returns. First, I don't trust you, pale face. Second, you were being detained, not arrested. Third, I'm FBI. I can arrest you or I can detain you as long enough for me to do my damn job without you or your good old boy from being a backwards hillbilly like cent like your central Liam Bennett. I meant to say your sheriff. Um, sound about hillbilly central and your, your sheriff Liam Bennett. I need to fix that. Any more questions? And he does. 
So let me fix this really, really quickly. Fix that. Backwards hillbilly central. Like your local sheriff. The infinite. Any more questions this is where I left off? And he answers, yeah. Too bad. I'm sorry. You're, I'm, oh, sorry, I gotta do it right. Too bad. Jamie returns, excuse me, y'all. Jamie returns. Too bad. I'm so sorry for your loss. But, I don't have to answer your questions. But I'll let you go before dinner time. Now sit your ass down, shut the fuck up, while I show you how I'm the deputy director of the FBI in this state. All right, so she's she's got him handcuffed, and then she goes back to work using her drone and her GoPro. I'm not gonna give you too much more. I'm just gonna finish this part off where she tapes this dude's mouth, because I think that was kind of cool to write that. Um, where am I? All right, he doesn't like the look in her eyes. Okay, so I skipped something. I might have to go back up a little bit. Okay, I do. So, um, she's broadcasting what she's finding on the vehicle to her deputy director, Carol Yang Chang, who's the deputy, like, the full-on director of the FBI. So, she's in charge, and Jamie's under her rank-wise. Wyatt continues to mumble under his breath, Start, this is starting to piss her off. So she smiles and she turns to him. He doesn't like the look in her eyes as she puts her hand, puts her puts her drone thing down, put it on autopilot, excuse me. She puts it on autopilot and she starts walking over to Wyatt Hampton. Wyatt returns. What are you doing over there? For the last time, my damn job. I need you to please shut the hell up. You can't make me shut up. My freedom of speech, you can't take my freedom of speech from me, bitch. That's not exactly 1,000% true. I can legally take your rights of speech away. Oh, excuse me. I misread that. I can't legally take your right to speech for sure. But I can take away your right to speak to me. Oh, really? Just how on earth do you think you can do that? With my favorite, with my favorite, and everyone who's watched these home improvement shows, this is the best invention ever made. It's called duct tape. As she reaches into her pocket and whips out some duct tape, she quickly rips off a strip just big enough to cover up his mouth. And by I say that, I made that because there have been people who have accidentally smothered people with duct tape. So that's why I said just big enough to cover up his mouth so it doesn't go up here. It just goes right under the bottom lip to the chin and not up here where it's so much over the nose and the mouth. That's why I specifically said just enough to reach his mouth. All right. Just enough to reach his mouth. So, yeah, this, this FBI agent is literally about to duct tape this dude. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. It's a book. It's a book. Now wait just a goddamn minute. You can't use that on me, says who? Says me. My First Amendment rights, you crazy bitch. Well, this one won't be taking your First Amendment rights, but I'm going to give you a total right for you to remain silent and stay that way long enough for me to do my damn job. Uh, Wyatt returns. Oh, just how the hell do you plan on doing that? <sighs> Jamie returns. I thought you'd never ask. Please watch and learn, fella. So she slaps the tape onto his mouth. And she smiles back at him as she walks back over to the car. As she is going to be quick now to continue to search and notice all the things that the other guys might have missed. So she's using a drone with a grow pro, just in case y'all don't understand what's happening. It also helps her just in case um, anything goes wrong. And she's also broadcasting it a live directly to um, the actual FBI director. And so that's pretty much what y'all need to hear about this. And this is in chapter three. So when the book drops, this will be the thing you need to look for from page 229 
to 2.30. Um, so hopefully that'll be something that will interest you guys in reading this book once it gets published. So I have to like finish the book first. I'm in chapter 3. And um, hopefully, and I state this because I will be working on this again tonight when I get home. I'm going to um, go see my bro who broke his neck in a car wreck. And he's still alive, thank God. But, you know, it's like over two weeks and some change ago. And this fucker ain't even bothered to reach out to tell me that he um, was in a fucking car wreck while doing his job. And so I got questions for him. And don't worry, I won't be breaking his fucking neck. I might make some jokes, though. You know. But yeah, fucking, um... I just want to give you guys a little outskirt on what I've been working on with the book. And while I have your attention, because I do have your attention, I want to know if you guys think that that would be some funny shit to see an FBI agent duct taping the mouth of a suspect. Because that's some shit that I would do if I was an FBI agent and somebody would shut the fuck up. Because, okay, so as you know, if you've been paying attention, I have a degree in police science and criminal justice. I'm just gonna go ahead and shut your ass down. So, I've, I've learned a lot in class, you know. I've learned a whole fuck ton of shit in class. Some things we can do, some things we cannot, but um, none of it's, like, involving FBI. So, therefore, um, the, the greatest power that a police officer has is the power of discretion. So, if you have a good cop and he's having a bad day, you kind of want to play nice so that he doesn't take his misdirected anger out on you. So... Hopefully y'all can still see me. Anyway, so I decided that I'm going to use some of this discretionary powers in this story. Um, Hawk, the hero, he does a lot of discretionary stuff, but I haven't gotten to that. That's more like that could be something in a flashback if I continue that thought process. Um, he finally got his love, love of his life back, and that happens in Chapter 3 as well. Um, the two murderers happen in chapter one and two. Actually, everything's coming together now, so I would say that the two murders happen basically chapter one, page one, first murder, and essay, and then chapter two, the second murder, which we're in chapter three, which is what brings it all together. And now the um, mayor has injected her power to get the natives out of Bennettsville. Bennettsville is the name of the imaginary Sundown Town, which is between the imaginary Native American Reservation and the College of UCLA. So that y'all can tell that I geographically have no fucking idea where I am. But anyway, um, for all story purposes, um, the three people that the story unfolds around were three students of college at UCLA. The black guy who's half black, half native is also gay. So he's a member of LBGTQ. The Native American community calls those guys two spirits. So he unfortunately dies to push the story forward. But um, he don't die like a sucker. He go like a fucking champ, which is why she's at the car. Um, the thing that connects the cases is also in chapter two or chapter three, besides the blood relation between the families. And then um, the tribal stuff, I haven't been raised on the reservation, so I don't know how tribal political stuff works. So I use some of the things that I've learned from certain people that I know that were natives from the res, and the rest of it's my imagination. So the book's called Sundown. It is to promote missing and murdered indigenous people and two spirits. And unfortunately, most of this stuff only gets made when tragedy happens, so I had to make it happen around a tragedy because this book is hopefully to promote everybody to the issues that Native Americans are facing that never hits mainstream media. And, you know, if you follow me on TikTok, you know I do a lot of MMIP stuff, missing and murdered indigenous people. So I'm hoping that this book, when it's done, will promote 
people into looking in and solving this problem so that there won't be any more missing and murdered indigenous people. Um, not sure if I'm going to put a Starlight Tour in this book. I think I might have mentioned Starlight Tours in this book. And I'm not going to give you any more, so you just got to, when the book is dropped, you're going to have to fucking read the shit. But, um, yeah, hopefully, I put it in a polite way. I took as much racism PG-13s as I could take, all right? Um, squaw is a very bad racist slur. If you call a Native American female a squaw and they fuck your shit up, you ask for that shit. And you deserve every ass whooping that you get. Um, I use pale face as a negative white term. And um, haven't called anybody chief or anything bad male wise. But there's a lot of there's a lot of racist innuendos without actually saying racist words. If that makes sense. I'm trying to like um, I'm trying to cut you with a butter knife. Versus stabbing you with an axe. I am probably going to incorporate a tomahawk in this thing. A bow and arrow. I'm, I'm still working out chapter fucking four in my head as we speak. But um, everything's probably going to come together after the funeral. At the end of chapter three, which I'm really getting close to. I'm going to dabble into the sheriff's wife. Because she's like going to be one of the key characters that change the tide. When this shit goes fuck you to everyone else. And so once that is established. Because um, if you read chapter 2 at the beginning. um, you'll Not so much at the beginning. But somewhere in there is a flashback between chapter 2 and chapter 3. It might be in chapter 3. That's why chapter 3 is the longest chapter. Because the first two chapters are like 50 pages. And then chapter 3 has just not stopped. So as I go on. I'm, I'm really debating on. Do I want to drag this shit out? Or do I want to, like, put in samples of, all right, I'll just kill it with, like, a couple of paragraphs of what's what's been happening and then go back to how I'm writing it. So, for instance, all right, this is my cast list, all right, and all my stories. I don't think I did it in, um, I know I didn't do it in Love 13. I'm pretty sure I did it. In American Kono Reach, which is being published by Page Publishing. So hopefully it will be dropping because I got it to them just as COVID was about to blow up. So God only knows when that's going to happen. But anyway, so I have these things called writer's notes, you know, and I'm going to drop them also in the book. It's, it's basically readers and writer's notes. It's to make sure that I keep track of where I am. Because I'm not a professional. This is my third book, but I'm not a professional. Trust me. I'm more or less writing for fun and to relieve myself of stress versus um, everything else. But if I can get paid and become a published writer, that would be great too. So um, this is my OG before I changed some names and stuff. So I changed some names. I'm not going to change the name of the thing. I'm using my alias, my... um. Echo Fan Grey Wolf and AKA James Williams Jr. is on there. So basically, um, right here is your opening telling you what's happening and shit. And then after that, you know, this the first opening page is just bad. It's it's just fucking bad. So um this book is definitely not for children. Um there are some things in here that I'm still debating on if I wanna um actually type in like a love scene or whatever and that's kind of the hardest part to decide and do i really want to describe a love scene do i really want to go there because i think i did it in love 13 but love 13 is just definitely not for children it's an autobiographical fantasy that involves a lot of um shit that's just not for kids now you might think oh but it's got like native american deities it's got um egyptian gods and deities and stuff and you think it's a fun fantasy it's an autobiographical fantasy i'm a singer in that i'm actually me i dedicated it to uh my ex-fiance my two drill sergeants that are here not the two fuckers down in fort benning and um i dedicated it to my two dads my surrogate dad and my biological dad because um 
both of them died before I could finish it. So I did finish it. I just, um, I wrote it. There's a video on TikTok where there's a video here because there's like seven books all handwritten where I use these pens. So each time you see a pen that's write, writing that's not blue, that means it's a god talking. But if you see something that's blue, it's a human talking where you have um, black is the narrative. Black is the story itself. And so, like I said, I'm not a professional writer. So when you see things, I can show you better than I can tell you. All right. Like, here, this is where people are talking. And you can see those two dots behind their names. Like, right there, Jason's talking. All right. So everything's written like that in America, Kona Beach. Everything's written like that here. Because, again, I'm not a professional writer. I didn't take any writing classes. What I have is a fucking imagination that's out of this fucking world, and I need to get some of that shit out of my skull. So, American Kono Beach is um, about a family who's half Japanese and half Native American, and their parents work for the U.S. government. There are zombies, there are demons, that's all you get. When the, when the book drops, or wherever the hell page publishing is going to send it, just look for American Kono Beach. That being said, I'm Echo Fan Grable. This is Kung Fu Havoc number two, B, C, and U. Also, in American Kono Beach, um, to the future wife in my head, I dedicated a chapter to Zeta Zhang. So, once it drops, hopefully she'll pick it up and she'll get it. Anyway, that being said, I am Echo Fan Grey Wolf, a.k.a. James Williams Jr. This is Kung Fu Havoc number two, B, C, and U. Find me on TikTok if you want, like, other stuff. And Instagram. You can find me on Facebook, but I'm I'm really not on Facebook like talking about it. But I am on IG and I'm definitely on TikTok. So that being said, much love, BCN.